towers. Hey, go back, Steve. I'm gonna get you! I'm gonna get you! Alright, alright, what's going on? Tap my missus. If that husband of yours was any sort of a man, hey, he'd hey, take hey, you! I'm gonna get you! Crazy. What's what are you, happening? What are you asking her for? This is my yard, and that crazed animal is trespassing. Don't you dare call me an animal! Right, take her over to the car, Jim. Alright, come on, calm down. Let's go over here. Well, tell him to leave us alone! Oh, tell him! Alright, alright. Just... Why doesn't he leave us alone? You wanna get her locked up, mate? She's got a screw loose. Know what I mean? Morning, Marion. Morning, Mr. Brownlow. DIC Hicks is expected over from area at 9.45. The minutes of our last meeting on Sector Policing, yes, they're on your desk. Oh, thanks very much. Good. Morning, Dave. Morning, sir. Meeting 11.30, OK? I want to discuss the DIC's reaction to our sectorization proposals. Right, sir. Yeah. God, I can't leave this place for five minutes. Surprise, surprise. Why the hell can you clear this mess up? Where are the boys? Hope you didn't let them play in here, eh? I'm sorry about this. Sorry, darlings. Mummy had to go out. Did Daddy give you any breakfast? No. Oh, just stay out there for a second, darlings, because there's broken glass. You could have at least cleared the ruddy glass up. Nanny, nanny. Why didn't you give them any breakfast, I? Eh? I forgot. <coughs> what are they doing here, anyway? Cabbage, they've come to look at the window. What do you think? Well, there it is. What's left of it? So, um, this happened this morning, yeah? Early morning, about five or something. Half six. You never even heard it. Don't get up till half eight. Some of us need to get some sleep. We don't all sit around our asses all day long. I only sleep two hours a night. Overactive mind. So you saw somebody throw something through the window? No, I didn't see anything. It was a brick, you say? Yeah. So where's that gone, then? In here. I'll get your breakfast now. I'll put it with the others. Quite a collection, ain't it? Why didn't you leave it where it was? Your bloke's told us before. You can't get no fingerprints off them. John had this idea that we'd wait till we had enough and brick up all the windows. It can be a bit of a pain, my husband. Don't take no notice of him. Takes all sorts. I can't help it. Doctor says he's suffering from mental stress. Though God knows, and we all suffer from that. You won't report me to social services, will you? Right, I'll go and make a quick assessment of the damage. What for? Yeah, you know, about me running out and leaving the kids this morning. I don't usually leave them. No, no, they've been early for that. Your wife seems convinced a scrap dealer called Jim Carr's got something to do with it. Something to do with it? Yeah, you could say that. I was front page news. A local hero. Car broke John's arm, but he never got sent down or nothing. When was this? Two poxy years ago. And that night we got our first one of these. John got a bump in the head at the time. Doctor said it was nothing, but if you ask me, that's what really knocked him up. He's not been the same man since, I can tell you that. Oh, look, stop it or I'll chuck him in the bin! I've been on the council transfer list ever since. But like the solicitor said about the criminal injuries payment, don't hold your breath, these things take time. But how long do you think we've got, eh? I suppose that's it then. Until next time I see him up the shops and he delivers another brick. No, Tracy, that isn't it. We're gonna go and see him. I wanna see what he's gotta say for himself. He'll just laugh at you. He thinks this is really funny. Additional guideline information on sectorization, mainly appraisals of stations where it's already up and running. Thank you, Marion. Thank you. You've read the policy document from the Yard? Oh, yes, sir, of course. Well, naturally, I've been taking a very keen interest in developments. 
I think I can assure you that all the inspectors here at Sun Hill are very keen and looking forward to heading up their own sectors. Well, I'm pleased to hear it, Charles. It hasn't been plain sailing elsewhere. Oh, really? Well, perhaps senior officers at other stations haven't been giving their inspectors the necessary hands-on support. How's your implementation team progressing? Oh, very well, sir. The initial meetings with all ranks have been very enthusiastic. We're determined here at Sun Hill to make sectorization a resounding success. I am reassured by your confidence. Well, thank you, sir. That's Holly, Sarge. They've sorted the problem out of the supermarket. It's NCPA. June, in answer to your inquiry, what? James Newell Carr convicted on six counts of burglary, one aggravated. One actual bodily harm. He was acquitted on a charge of attempted robbery two years ago. John Carpenter was a witness, but the forensic evidence didn't hold up. Received. Thanks, Donna. Don't know why the hell you got us involved in this, June. Well, what are we supposed to do? Turn a blind eye? Nobody deserves the kind of aggro they've been getting, especially them. It's only a broken window, for God's sake. The guy's a sponger. He gets his name in the paper for being a hero, thinks he can sit about on his arse all day waiting for some five grand to turn up from the criminal injuries compensation. And how many shouts is that we've dipped out on this morning, June? You're a cynic, Steve. Three six three from Sierra Oscar. Three six three receiving. Steve, any chance you're covering Powers Grove? I'm afraid at the present moment that's another no. Can I help you, Missy? Yes, I think maybe you can. Have you locked her up yet? She's a right old lunatic, that one. Could you tell me where you were at 6.30 this morning, Mr. Carr? Why? Because I'm asking. Well, I was in my bed. Where else would I be at such an ungodly hour? Warrington Drive, breaking windows. <laughs> now, hold on there in a moment, Missy. Don't you come down here giving me all this, or I'll have you out that front gate so fast your feet won't touch the ground. Oh, yeah? You try. What's going on? Oh, it's all right, there's no problem. <coughs> Mr. Carr was just about to do us a favour, weren't you, Mr. Carr? This little girlie of yours has a hell of a tongue on her. Now, either you arrest me and take me down the nick for questioning, or you get out that front gate while you can still walk. Don't threaten us, Mr. Carr, or you will find yourself down the nick. No offence to yourself, but if you've got grounds, you come down here and arrest me. Know what I mean? Otherwise, leave me alone, OK? You understand what I'm saying? You either take me or leave me, OK? Right. Well, sorry we disturbed you, Mr. Carr. Good luck. Forget it, June. You've got nothing on him. It was him, though. He's been harassing that family for the last two years. He thinks he's so clever he can get away with it. Yeah, so what are you going to do? Ask Inspector Monroe for round-the-clock surveillance on his house? I'm going to have him, Steve. You favour three sectors. Why? Well, it makes good geographical and logistical sense. I'm proposing we uh, amalgamate the 20 beats into three sectors. Six in one, seven in the two others. How evenly will that distribute the workload? Well, from my demographical analysis and the crime statistics, it'll lead to greater efficiency. Enable us to put manpower in the areas of greatest need. Yes, but how will the balance of the workload compare between sectors? Uh, this sector here, for instance. It's a tough area. There's no doubt it's one of the toughest sectors to cover, but from a community policing point of view, I don't think it should be fragmented. The success of sector policing is all down to four things, Charles. The partnerships you build with the community, the problems you solve, the performance of your officers, and the perseverance of those at the top. Yes, sir. My sentiments entirely. What's up with you two today? You want to go slow or something? You slow, it'll be going backwards. Come on, you two. Rest her over three minutes ago. We're late in, sir. And we've had another call from your Mrs. Carpenter. She's not our Mrs. Carpenter, sir. Yeah, well, she is now. She's reported another broken window. Modus operandi, one brick. Stick it with the rest of them. Number six. You've got to stop this. You've got to do something. You didn't see anyone. I took the kids down me mum's. Get out for half an hour. So there was nobody here? Well... Well, don't look at me! What am I supposed to do? I looked out, but there was no one there, right? So don't give me the evil eye. I'm not blaming you. Yeah, but it's my fault, isn't it? Of course not, Mr. Carpenter. Do you know something? You get right up my nose. Oh, John White! Oh, it's no good. 
Well, thanks anyway. Better get this lot cleared up and do something about them. God knows what the electric bill's going to be like. Come on, darlings, upstairs and play. Mummy's got to get cleared up. I'll go around the neighbours, see if they saw anything. Thanks. Look, Tracy, I can see you've had the rough end of the stick. And after what John did, well, you deserve a damn sight better than this. He didn't ask to be a hero. All the papers and that. He was just an ordinary bloke. He just wanted to do the right thing. Well, for what it's worth, I think it stinks. I think the criminal injury system stinks. And your husband getting the sack. He ain't even got any mates anymore. He's just not the same bloke. He hardly moves out that chair. Except for the call of nature and the DSS. I suppose there's no work around here at the moment. To be honest, I don't think he's capable anymore. He can't handle it. He's had a personality change since the injury. Just loses his rag all the time, even shouts at the telly. When he went on some training course, he ended up threatening to punch the instructor. Does he get violent? Oh, no, don't get me wrong. He's never laid a finger on anyone. He's a real softy. He could have knocked me down with a feather when he'd go at that bastard car. Excuse my French, but he is. Yeah, I know. John was very brave to take him on. Yeah, that's what they all said. But it ended our marriage, didn't it? Do you know the last time we slept together? Well, let's put it this way, my little one's four months old. No witnesses. That's that then, June? No, it isn't. This has gone far enough. I'm not just standing by and letting it go on any longer. Don't you think you're getting a bit involved in this, June? You think she's lying? Well, how come she was in bed when that brick came through this morning? She was down her mum's for the second. <laughs> you think John Carpenter's putting bricks through his own window? To back up his case, it stands to reason, yeah. <gasps> you amaze me, Steve. So where to now, then? The Nick. And you've got evidence for this, have you, June? No, sir, not yet. I mean, I've been round to see Carr. The point is that this family are living in fear. They're trapped in this council house and still they wait for a CICB payment. Now, we ask members of the public to help us, but what help do we give them in return? To put it crudely, sir, sweet Fanny Adams. I mean, surely we owe them something. Look, leave it with me, will you, Joan? I'll talk to CID and see if I can't rush up the CICB payment. Yes, sir. Thank you. June. Sir? This character, Carr, does he still purport to be a scrap metal dealer? Yes, sir. He's got a yard on Torpitz Road. Oh. Well, I suggest you brush up on police powers pertaining to scrap metal dealers. Mm -hmm. Then I suggest you pay him another visit. Yes, sir. Hmm? Thank you, sir. We have to do this. Because it's our problem, Steve, and we've got to get it sorted. The old days of people palming their problems off until the next shift will soon be extinct, thank goodness. Yeah, well, as long as I get more duties on the area, car, I don't give a stuff what kind of system we work. How long is this going to take, then? Until he gets the message. are you playing at? Excuse me, you've got a licence to drive this lorry. The DAC was pleased then, was he? Yes, I think so. He seemed very impressed by how enthusiastic we all were. Oh, that's a bit of an exaggeration, isn't it, sir? Oh? Well, from what I hear, Stringer's been passing information down to the troops, and most of them say they don't want to change. They're perfectly happy in a relief system. Yes, well, they'll be perfectly happy in a sector when it arrives. It's not quite the same, though, is it, sir? being stuck in a little group of six or whatever. I mean, imagine getting lumbered with somebody like Hollis on your team. I don't know. With his experience and local knowledge, I would have thought he'd be invaluable. Well, that's not the point, though, is it, sir? I mean, what's going to happen to the nine-to-fivers like Ron Smollett? They're going to do a 24-hour shift, are they? Look, I know it's not going to be plain sailing, but if we're going to be successful, it's imperative that we link manpower to demand. 
That's the advantage sectorization has over the old relief system. Now, in my opinion, our success depends on four things. The partnership we build with the local community, the problems we solve, the performance of our officers, and above all, the perseverance of you and I. Yeah, I'm sure you're right, sir. How much longer is this going to take? Operator's license insurance test certificate. Can my man get away now? In a minute. Right. Don't forget to produce your driving license at a police station within seven days. Right. Shift yourself. Don't forget to get that brake light fixed, will you? <laughs> You're going to do me for that now? No. Well, if you've quite finished, then. With the lorry? Yeah. And now we'd like to look round your yard. Oh, you got to be joking, darling. This is my yard, and I say who can come in and have a look around, and I say no. And I'm not asking, Mr Carr. I'm telling. Under Section 6 of the Scrap Metal Dealers Act, we have the power to enter and inspect your yard at will. And for your own good, I'll give you a warning. You try to obstruct us, and you will be committing an offence. After I've arrested you, we'll come back here, and if necessary, we'll enter your premises by force. Force? What's a strong word? Have you seen them lot in there? We don't want any bother, Mr. Carr. We just want to come in and make an inspection. Presumably you keep a record of all these. Well, now, what do you think? And, uh, what about that lot over there? Can you give me their engine numbers from where you got them from? Are you going to be asking me these damn pig ignorant questions all morning? Even longer if you don't start giving me some answers. Yes, Jack. Thought we might want to continue our discussions. Uh, Not just at the moment, Derek, no. I've just been talking to Inspector Munro. He tells me that you've suggested that Ackland and Loxton should spend the rest of the day rummaging in a scrapyard. It was only a suggestion, Derek. Andrew's in charge of the relief. I wouldn't have thought there could be any doubt about that. But it does illustrate that the notion of aligning manpower to demand is a bit of a nonsense, sir. I mean, the nature of our job is having enough resources available to deal with the unexpected. That's exactly what the relief system gives us. Yes, well, I'm sure we can have a very interesting discussion about this when I get back. Hmm? But you do consider that tying up Ackland and Loxton in a dispute over a broken window is good use of resources? In this particular instance, I do, yes. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a meeting to go to, all right? How much longer is this going to take? We're going to be here all day. Freezing standing out here in the cold. Oh, jeez. Is that the time? Listen, I've got a thousand things to do. I've got to get that lot weighed in, unloaded, and get him out for another load. Well, I think that's just about it, Mr. Carr. Right. Now, I just need you to show me where these are entered in your trading records. What? You want to do it now? Yes, please. Ah. The problem, Mr. Carr? Hmm. Oh, thank you. I just wanted to come round and apologise to you both personally. Go on. I've already spoken to somebody about your claim for criminal injuries compensation, and you should hear something in the next couple of weeks. If you don't, give me a phone at Sunhill. I'll look into it personally. As to the other matter, I think I can assure you that at the moment we're on top of it. That's what I've bought, and that's what I've sold. 363, the CEO Oscar receiving, over. Receiving. Yeah, silly question, Steve, but are you clear yet? No. OK, just checking. Ready when you are, Mr. Carr. Oh, make yourself at home, why don't you? Right. Starting from the top. I'd like you to show me exactly who you bought the vehicles from and how much you paid for them, the time and date of purchase, and the logbooks that go with them. And there. There. But no time and date, just a name. No address of the person she bought them from, no logbook. I bought 
them for scrap. It makes no difference. Until they are scrap, they should have logbooks. Right. Well, it's too late now, isn't it, Mr. Carr? OK, that pile of engines you've got down the bottom of the yard. Can you show me the chassis numbers they came from? I have to get that lorry sorted. I can't afford to have them sitting around out there all day. Fine. We'll still be here when you get back. Look! I've had just about as much of you as I could take. Now, I want to know what all this is about. All about, Mr Carr? What do you think it's about, Mr Carr? I think you are starting to get up my nose. And what possible reason could we have for doing that, Mr Carr? How the hell should I know? I've got work to do. Sit down, please, Mr Carr. I said sit down. Can you do a PNC vehicle check on that little lot, please, Steve? Yeah, sure. You OK? Yeah, I'm just going to have a quiet word with Mr Carr. You can't touch me for nothing. I've got this, and that's just for starters. You've got nothing on me! And look, don't push your luck, Mr Carr. Unless things improve around here, you're going to see a lot more of us. Is that a fact? That's a promise. You being a scrap metal dealer, we can get a warrant to come and inspect your yard just like that. And believe me, we will. Are you threatening me? You should know. That's a dangerous thing to do. Any more broken windows and you know what to expect, right? I can't put it any plainer than that. I don't know nothing about any broken windows. That woman's deranged. Look, do you want to spend the rest of today with us turning your yard over? Or do you want to get back to work and earn yourself a crust? Now it's up to you. <sighs> OK. I hear what you're saying. Good. But if she puts in one more complaint, I'm going to be back here mob-handed. And we're going to turn over every nut and bolt in that yard. And when we've finished, I'll send some more up here to do it all over again. OK? <sighs> right. Well, I'm glad we were able to have this little chat, Mr Carr. Let's hope the only inspections you'll be needing in the future will be the routine ones. Have a nice day. Right. Any sure on that PNC check? Nah, not a dicky bird. So what happened then? Yeah. All right, I just on, gave him a bit of friendly advice. Come on. Yeah, doesn't I look too happy about it, does he? Well, at least I didn't put a brick through his window. <laughs> <laughs>